If you want to take a road trip with yourself, your family, and all of their stuff, what's the perfect vehicle to do that with? An SUV, right? Well, for many years, the ultra-luxury automakers didn't make those types of vehicles. They weren't all about practicality, but in recent years, companies like Bentley have decided to branch out and build SUVs. Bentley's SUV, the Bentego, was so successful that they decided to facelift it for the 2021 model year. That's what I have here. We're gonna do a deep dive as I spend a couple of days with the Bentego. I'm even taking a couple of days off so that I can road trip this vehicle. So let's see how well the 2021 facelift of Bentega fares as a road trip vehicle. So let's start off with an exterior walk around of the new Bentega. And when I say new, they have radically changed the exterior of this car. The only things that have carried over from the first Bentega are the doors and the roof. Everything else is different. We have this beautiful shade of ice, which is this really nice metallic white, it's the same color that I had on my Flying Spur test car. Now this is based on Volkswagen's MLB Evo platform. Now that underpins some vehicles that you might be familiar with, like the Audi Q7, but I think Bentley has done a really nice job making the Bentega stand out and look like its own vehicle, especially on this facelifted model. We've got these beautiful new headlights. They're pretty much the same as what you get on the Flying Spur and the Continental GT. They look gorgeous at night, basically like a crystal glass champagne flute that is glistening in, in the light. I love the way the headlights look. They're probably my favorite aspect of the whole car. I also love this big, nice chrome grill it looks like a piece of jewelry sitting on the front of this car. You can get it in black as well, but I'm, I'm usually not a big fan of chrome, but I think Bentley does it in such a really nice, elegant way here on the Bentega. Coming around the side, we have the Mulliner driving specification. That's gonna get us these really nice 22 inch directional wheels. They look great. They do add a little bit of road noise to the vehicle, if I'm being honest. We've got the nice B uh, vent here, which is really cool as well. Coming down the side, we have have sort of a little uh, roof rack here. Um, and we also have a completely different look here on the back. This is where Bentley has really changed the Bentega the most. So the outgoing Bentega, I didn't think it looked all that special, especially from the rear. It had kind of those regular generic taillights. Now these taillights look very similar to what you'll get on the Continental GT, which is gorgeous in its current iteration. And I think that has created a really unique design here for the Bentega. They've also moved the license plate down here so it's no longer on the tailgate. I think this gives the Bentega a completely different look for an SUV that it just didn't have before and makes it feel like it's really worth its crazy price. We also have these really nice quad tip exhausts and oh, you better bet that those are real. All right, so now that we've checked out the exterior of the facelifted Bentega, let's come inside the cabin where, again, Bentley has made some major improvements here to sort of modernize the Bentega and just overall give it a tech update, which is fantastic. The most important thing that Bentley has added here is this new 10.9 inch touchscreen display. This is standard across all Bentegas. It looks fantastic. I love how wide it is here. The graphics are crisp as well. Um, so you can have sort of this main menu here with all of your menu options. Or if you come over here to the left, you can kind of have this split display where you have your navigation, your phone stuff, and your radio all in one. You also have like a pull down menu for some short cuts and things like that. And if you don't want to touch it and get the screen all grubby, you have this rotating controller here, which I actually thought that would be kind of gimmicky um, to use like a rotating knob here, but it actually works quite well. It just spins in two directions, you know, left or right, and you have a home button and a back button. And surprisingly, I have used that quite a bit to kind of just hit menu items that I would want to use real quickly. The other thing that they've added for uh, the 2021 model year with this facelift is wireless Apple CarPlay technology. So you do not need 
need to have your phone plugged in. Look how nice that looks here on this screen. It just shows you how high resolution this display is. You can get Android Auto as well, but it is not wireless like the Apple CarPlay is. Uh, we have some optional extras here in this car. So this 10.9 inch touchscreen as standard is tied to a Bentley signature audio system that's 590 watts channeled through 12 speakers. Now I'm sure that system is fine, but we have the optional name audio system that cranks it up to 1,780 watts with 20 speakers and I gotta say this sound system is incredible when you have it on you just do not hear the outside world it cocoons you in this amazing sound it really is quite an impressive system you also get a wireless charger as standard that's housed down here so that's nice to use with wireless carplay when you're not plugged in and we do have some other great technologies as well we have our nice 360 degree cameras which is nice to help make this vehicle a little bit easier to park and we do have night vision which is quite cool love to show you how that looks but since we are filming in broad daylight you're not going to get quite a good look at what that looks like so also new here on the 2021 Bentega are these all digital gauges. See the last Bentega, the first model had physical gauges. Now it is all just a screen. They're very simple. Uh, you can see that only the area where the needle is touching is lit and the rest is kind of darked out. That's to kind of give you like a more luxury and elegant vibe and not overwhelm you with information. Although you can have quite a bit up here as well. You can see we have a full color uh, Google Maps image of of the map here and if I click this view button I can have that go much bigger very similar to what Audi does on their virtual cockpit displays um, now let's talk a little bit more about the materials that you get in here we have the cricket ball interior yes this is cricket ball darling um, I guess cricket balls are red I really have never watched a game of cricket in my life but the red seats are really nice although it does kind of limit you to your ambient light choices to either red or white because everything else kind of clashes with this interior. But we also have the Mulliner driving specification. It's like $15,000, but it adds this sort of tufted leather with these beautiful 3D diamond quilts in it beautiful interior pretty much everything you touch is either leather or metal i love how we have the nice analog clock here we have these pulleys that feel like a dampening valve to close and open the air vents that's a really nice touch all of the dials are knurled beautifully so they all feel really nice to the touch the paddle shifters are also knurled really well there are one or two plastic buttons you know like the traction control button is kind of cheap plastic but very very few times will you hear the word cheap and Bentley go together. I will note that there is one single button in this car that I can recognize from an Audi vehicle, and that is the controls for the head-up display to raise or lower it. I just recently drove an Audi SQ5 that has this exact same switch, but other than that, there's really nothing in here that feels familiar with any Audi or Porsche products. you're going to be driving around your Bentega and you might have some kids back here in the back seat and they do have some nice things to enjoy back here. These seats do slide uh, forward. You can see they go all the way up and they go about this far back. Bentley says they've carved out some more room on this seat to give people a little bit more knee room. I'm five foot eight. I have plenty. Headroom's not as great, but leg room is fantastic. And these seats do recline pretty far back. So you can get pretty comfy back here. Although I should note, we do have heating on these seats we don't have ventilation and we don't have massage like you're able to get on a flying spur i think you probably can get those if you get the bentega in one of its other specifications we have it just as a five seater you can actually get an optional third row to make this a seven seater or if you want you can limit this to be a four seater in which case you get this really nice center console here in between two captain's chairs i would probably go for that honestly you're probably not going to have that fifth person in here all that much anyway so i'd probably go for the four 
four-seater option. But when you do opt for the fifth seat, you just get a normal leather-wrapped armrest with two cup holders. You do have your air vents back here, which is really nice. You also have some air vents here on the pillars. And the other nice thing that you get on the Mentega that you don't get on most SUVs is this little touchscreen tablet. This thing is really cool. From here, you can control the sunshade, you can control the radio, you can turn on your heated seats. Um, you can even program things on the navigation, which is quite cool as well. So I really like that you have this for the kids to play with. It ejects from this nice little slot, it even has beautiful knurling, just like some of the buttons up front. Now this may be a Bentley after all, but it is still an SUV, so it has to be practical. To open up the trunk, you just click the B here in the Bentley logo, and that's gonna open up the rear cargo area where you get 17 cubic feet, a little bit over that in storage space. Now you can fold down those rear seats to open up about 62 cubic feet. Now I will mention that Bentley has not put any uh, way to lower the seats from here in the cargo area. You do have to go to the back seats to lower those down. The other interesting thing that we we do have here. It's a little cargo net on the side and we do have buttons that will lower the air suspension here in the back, making it a little bit easier to load groceries in there. So if you're gonna be taking a road trip, this is definitely the best Bentley to do it in because you are gonna have more storage space than any of their other models. All right, so now that we've checked out all of the uh, parked stuff with the new Bentega, let's get it out on the road because of course, this is the type of Bentley that you're gonna wanna drive with your family on a road trip, taking this across America for miles and miles. So let's see how this vehicle drives. And I'm gonna start by talking about the engines that are available because you do have three choices there. So we've got the V8 Bentega, which is the only one that you're going to be able to buy right away. It's a four liter twin turbocharged V8 engine. Now that does share a lot in common with some of the engines of the same size that you can get in Audi and Porsche, but Bentley has its own unique tune on this engine. It's very quiet, almost whisper quiet. You can't even hear it most of the time unless you're really, really on the throttle. It develops really nice power, 542 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque, and that's mated to an eight-speed automatic, a conventional automatic, not a dual clutch like you get on the Continental GT and the Flying Spur sedan. Now, zero to 60 is very quick in this car, 4.4 seconds, that's as fast as you could really ever need, and the top speed, if you're so inclined, this car will go 180 miles an hour, which is really, really fast for an SUV. And it's worth noting that this V8 also has mild hybrid assist. So it has very smooth uh, engine stop start. It has very nice torque delivery at all RPMs. It's very smooth and buttery. And it can deactivate cylinders to get you a little bit better fuel economy. You're gonna get 15 MPG in the city, 24 on the highway, that's not actually that bad. And then 18 MPG combined when it shuts down to become a four cylinder engine, which is pretty interesting uh, for a Bentley. See, it's not all just massive excess. But if you do wanna be a little bit more excessive, you can opt for the Bentega Speed. Now that's probably the way I would go. That's gonna get you Bentley's six liter twin turbocharged W12 engine, which I've driven in the Flying Spur. Check out my review of that car as well. That was a lovely, lovely car. Now that ups the power significantly to 626 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque. Your zero to 60 is gonna drop from 4.4 seconds to 3.9, that's really quick for an SUV, and you're gonna get 10 extra miles per hour on your top speed, 190 miles an hour. Now fuel economy on that model. That model does de cylinder deactivate as well, but you're only gonna get 12 mpg in the city, 18 on the highway, and 14 combined, but that W12 is a torque monster, it just whooshes you away. That, that engine is like a nuclear bomb of power. Now this one is still 
pretty powerful artillery, maybe a cannon, but you know, that W-12 is a nuclear bomb. There's nothing else quite like the way that engine delivers power. And then there is a third option I should mention as well. You can get the Bentayga as a hybrid. Now that gives you a three liter twin turbocharged V6 engine. So yeah, V6 engine in a Bentley model, 442 horsepower is your combined output when you combine the electric motor and the V6 and 516 pound feet of torque, which is really nice as well. The benefit of that model is you're gonna be able to go well over 500 miles on a tank and a charge. And Bentley says on the NEDC cycle, which is not what we use here in America, you're gonna be able to get about 31 miles of electric only range. So I could imagine maybe if you live in California and you don't do very far driving, maybe you live at the top of one of those beautiful mountains in Malibu and you just wanna drive down to your local uh, bodega or shop or whatever on electric power alone, you can do that with the with the Bentega hybrid. So that's probably not the one I'd go for. I'd go for the Bentega speed because I'm all about the big engine and the excess. But this V8 model is a really nice middle ground. So now that we've got all that boring engine stuff out of the way, let's see how the Bentega drives with the V8 engine. Now I'm gonna start by doing a launch control here. Yes, this car does have launch control. I've put it into sport mode, left foot on the brake, right foot on the throttle, let's go. Oh boy. <laughs> that is really fast. I mentioned that this engine is virtually silent all the time, but when you nail the throttle, you do get some gurgly V8 noise. It just punches away very smooth. The transmission is very quick. You can put it into manual mode as well and take control via these nice knurled metal paddles. Uh, yeah, this car is really quick, about as quick as you could possibly want your SUV to be. I will say that the throttle has as kind of like a dead point. I think they didn't they didn't want the throttle to be too tippy. So you really have to lean into the throttle a lot to get a good bit of acceleration, which is a bit weird and a bit, uh, but you do get used to it after a while. You have a couple of drive modes here. So right now I'm in sport mode and that's gonna tighten everything up. But the default mode is called Bentley mode. They don't just call it normal mode. They call it Bentley mode. Now that's your best combination of sort of sporty handling, but also being very comfortable. Bentley likes all of its cars to not only be a very refined and relaxing place to be, but they also want to give you the feeling that this vehicle is fun to drive. So when you're on a road trip, you know, somewhere and you get to a road that's curvy, you don't want to be completely isolated from the experience. That's a way that Bentley is very different from let's say a mark like Rolls Royce, where most of their vehicles, the Cullinan included, is a very isolating place to be. They don't really want you to be so much engaged with the driving experience. They want you to be removed from the world around you. So Bentley mode is what you're going to drive around in normally. You also have a comfort mode. It's going to dial everything back. If you do want to be a little bit more deprived of the driving experience, if you want to be a little bit more relaxed, now that's going to tone down the throttle, tone down the steering and things like that as well. And there is a custom mode where you can kind of set up the car exactly how you want it to be. Now, I mentioned that Bentley definitely wants this vehicle to be more of a driver's car, but I gotta say, there are some uh, disadvantages to having this based on the same platform that is used by vehicles like the Audi Q8 and the Porsche Cayenne, and I feel that while driving this more so than the Flying Spur. So when I drove the Flying Spur, that car is based on a Porsche platform that it shares loosely in common with the Panamera, which is a fantastic car to drive. This one, I gotta say, is not nearly as engaging to drive. The steering is very, very light, which is great for a luxury experience. Not so great if you want to hustle this car around a back road. The eight-speed automatic is great. It's very smooth, but it is nowhere near as razor sharp as the dual clutch that you're going to get in the Flying Spur. That transmission is basically PDK on steroids. It's fantastic. So in that regard, this isn't the best driver's SUV out there. I think you're going to have a little bit more fun in, say, a Maserati Levante, uh, possibly an Alfa Romeo 
Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio if you're willing to go down uh, in terms of luxury because that is nowhere near the luxury that you're going to get from this car and possibly the Aston Martin DBX as well. That's another vehicle that you may be looking at uh, in regards to this car but I think this definitely does luxury a little better than most of the vehicles that I just mentioned to you. We have uh, Bentley's Dynamic Ride Control. Now this is an optional extra here. What it does is it uses the 48 volt mild hybrid system which is basically like a loose uh, hybrid system to control the suspension's body roll. So if you go ahead and tip this car very quickly into a corner, you're gonna realize that this Bentley does not roll around like most luxury SUVs do. It stays planted, it uses the suspension to sort of counteract the side that's leaning. So I'm gonna go for a really quick U-turn right here and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, it just didn't, most cars are going to tip and you're going to feel like you're really rolling around a lot, especially in a tall riding SUV. This car just stays flat all the time. It, they might as well have called this magic suspension, although I think that's maybe a little too close to Rolls-Royce's magic carpet ride. But yeah, the ride on this car is absolutely sublime. You do feel some bumps. Again, Bentley wants you to be a little engaged in the experience. They don't want to deprive you of everything. But the way this vehicle rides is beautiful. It is a great vehicle that I would take on a road trip and be comfortable while also somewhat enjoying the driving experience as well. If, if Bentley's goal was to take a platform and really make it their own, I think they've sort of halfway come there, but I do believe that in terms of creating one of the most luxurious SUVs I've ever driven, Bentley has succeeded in that goal. So let's price out our 2021 Bentega. And for a vehicle like this, I've pulled out the spec sheet because this baby has a long list of options that I wanna make sure I talk to you all about. Now you gotta remember when you're shopping in this price category, people aren't necessarily cross shopping the Bentega with other SUVs like the Cullinan from Rolls Royce, the Maserati Levante, the Aston Martin DBX. They're probably cross shopping this with a boat or a plane, or a fancy vacation, something along those lines. But let's go ahead and see how much this Bentega costs. $177,000 is gonna get you a base Bentega with a V8 engine. Now we've got $59,000, an entire Infiniti or Lexus worth of options here. So we've got this extended range color uh, ice, that's $6,200. We've got uh, contrast stitching, $2,600. LED welcome lights, $1,000. That Moliner driving specification with these beautiful 22 inch wheels and some of the other interior upgrades, that's $15,000. $500. We've got the touring specification, gives us a lot of our driving aids, that's $8,555. We've got rear privacy glass, that's 2,100 bucks. We've got that name audio system, that's fantastic, that's $8,800. The Bentley Dynamic Ride, that amazing suspension, that's $5,300. It's gonna bring the total cost of this car to over $236,000. Now I know that's what a lot of you will spend on a home, but if you want one of the most luxurious SUVs in the world, you got to get a Bentley Bentega. So that was the 2021 Bentley Bentega. I'm so happy I could give you a deep dive on this car. Now I'm going to go and take this on a couple of road trips to really see how well it works as a luxury vehicle, but I'm pretty convinced that Bentley has done a nice job here creating one of the most elegant and luxurious SUVs available. Now they started with a Volkswagen Audi platform and they've really made it their own in a way that does feel like a true Bentley. Is it the Bentley I would buy? Probably not, but again, I don't have a family. I'm just a single guy. I would probably go for a Continental GT or maybe even a Flying Spur. I just prefer the way those cars drive. But if you are looking for the ultimate way to chauffeur your family in luxury, the Bentley Bentega is a really cool option. Hey everyone, we really hope you've enjoyed this review of the 2021 Bentley Bentega. For more videos like it, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted of all of our latest videos. And be sure to check us out on all of the other social media platforms, including TikTok, where we have short digestible videos of vehicles just like this. I'll see you next time.